Today I'm going to show you how to synthesize the extremely popular pigment cobalt blue. And to get started, I need to dissolve some aluminum in hydrochloric acid. I used aluminum foil as my source of aluminum, but I don't recommend it because it contains a lot of plastic and iron impurities that were really difficult to separate. The reaction between hydrochloric acid and aluminum is highly exothermic, so be careful with this. This reaction yields aluminum trichloride, which I now need to take a couple steps to purify. The first step was a basic filtration to remove the plastics or whatever, and the second step was the addition of excess aluminum foil to precipitate the iron that was present in the foil. This took an annoyingly long time, but eventually I was left with a perfectly clear solution of aluminum trichloride. I pour some of this into a beaker and then slowly add 2 molar sodium hydroxide to form the white precipitate aluminum hydroxide. This addition is continued until the solution is strongly alkaline as indicated by indicator paper. The precipitate is filtered off and I'm left with this gooey white mess that's cooked in the oven until it's completely dry. Here's my dry aluminum hydroxide and this is one of the two reagents I need for my cobalt blue. The other reagent is a cobalt salt such as cobalt chloride or cobalt nitrate and since I've made that several times on this channel already, I'm not going to do it again. To that end, I weigh out 5 grams of my aluminum hydroxide and 1 gram of my cobalt chloride and these are added to a mortar and ground together extremely thoroughly. The result is a fine pink powder that would ordinarily be loaded into a kiln and cooked at 1200 degrees celsius for about an hour, but that's no fun to watch. Instead, I load the mixture into a test tube and heat it with a Bunsen burner so you guys can actually see the reaction going on. Again, this method is far less efficient than a kiln, but I do like the footage that I got from it. Very quickly it starts to turn blue, and at first this is just the color of cobalt chloride when exposed to high heat. Eventually though, at around 1200 degrees celsius, the aluminum hydroxide will decompose to aluminum oxide and water. The aluminum oxide will then go on to bind with the cobalt to form cobalt aluminate, which is cobalt blue. This is heated strongly for 5 minutes, at which point it's taken off the heat to cool, and as it cools it takes on this much lighter shade of blue. The product is then transferred to a mortar and pulverized to prepare for a thorough washing. The first step of the washing is done using distilled water to remove any unreacted cobalt chloride. I then let it sit for about 30 minutes to let all the pigment settle to the bottom, and then I decant off the pinkish cobalt chloride. The second washing is done using 1 molar hydrochloric acid to remove any unreacted aluminum, and the third washing is done with acetone. In each of these washings, I let it settle and decant just like I did in the first. Meanwhile, I tried another run using 0.5 grams excess aluminum hydroxide and twice the cook time to see if that made any difference in yield or color. The yield was almost identical in both runs at about 2.3 grams each, but the second batch was a noticeably darker shade of blue and I found that interesting. Regardless, this is my final product, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, cobalt blue is an extremely popular pigment and used in everything from classical paintings to cars to housing design to Sonic the Hedgehog. Here's my favorite classical painting that uses cobalt blue extensively. The pigment really is everywhere. And as a final little test, I'm going to do what I usually do and crush it up in my mortar and pestle with some linseed oil to try to see how it works as a paint. I note now that it's kind of grainy and could definitely use a muller. I'll get one someday. It also doesn't really absorb nearly as much oil as a lot of the other pigments I've synthesized. Despite this and its somewhat low tinting strength, it has a brilliant color that I like more than any of the blue pigments I've synthesized so far on this channel. It really is a lovely blue, and I think I'm going to try to make some more in a kiln and see how that goes. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this process, and if you'd like to see more science, consider giving me a follow.